Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 392. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. And today, or this week, we have a bunch of news. Quite a lot, really. So, let's not dilly-dally and hop right into it. So, in first news, some possible writers for Pony Life Revealed. Uh, that's My Little Pony, Pony Life. The new one that's coming out soonish. So, it seems that um, Whitney Rowles, um, I'm not sure who Whitney is, but um, I think director or something like that? I'm not 100% sure, but I'm just going to read what Calpain wrote. While we've been uh, descending the new show over on Twitter, the writer, oh no, writer, alright, okay. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to summarize it. She just kind of blurted out a few names and they could be possibly the new writers for the new show. Uh, some <laughs> Someone asked, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you and your pals are the writers for this, yes? And she replied, yep. And some of them are Katie Chilson, writer for Camp Squad Horse Senses, <laughs> uh, some EQ Equestria Girls Short, and the Friendship is Magic Short Teacher of the Month. Huh, isn't that the one where Fluttershy was... Yeah, I don't remember. Anyway, uh, and then we got Tana... Tanika Schotz, writer for Steven Universe Future, and Craig of the Creek, both shows on Cartoon Network. Dave Wartz, writer for Rick and Morty. Oh wow, that's going to be interesting. Greg Levine, uh, writer script and community for Pox and Rat. Oh wow, okay. Josh Brown, writer for Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, this is a new one, I think. Oh. So, overall, we, we have a few writers here who are kind of really interesting. Um, The one that I am hopeful for is Dave. Because we've seen some Rick and Morty episodes, and they can get really, really interesting. Really interesting. So I've got no idea how this is going to work in ponies, but we have to wait and see. This is going to be really fun. Uh, and Tanika, uh, some Steven, the, the <laughs> Steven Universe Future, I haven't seen that one. That one's not out yet. So that's going to be interesting when that comes out. So it's going to be interesting. I, I got no idea how this is going to feel and pan out because I haven't seen it yet and the pony life thing a lot of people are poo-pooing it I'm here on a, in a neutral state where I'm gonna wait and see because we still have the previous voice actors coming in reprising the roles so that's gonna be awesome there yes but I got no idea how the tone and feel is gonna be and if it's any indication of how Titans was, the Teen Titans Go, it it feels like Teen Titans okay okay uh, Teen Titans Go develop their own style as time goes on. It's pretty, huh, I don't know, um, funny in its own way. And there's a lot of fans for the show, and for this one, I'm I'm sure that some of the previous fans are going to come in and give it a chance. Yet some are already disliking it because of the art and style. So we'll just have to wait and see. In all honesty, for me, I just want to <laughs> watch it now because more pony contents, yay. But 
that's besides the point. So let's roll on to the next news. And next news is sculpture for upcoming Applejack Kotobukiya figure appears. Yay! So there's nothing more to say than another Kotobukiya figure is coming out soon ish. And here is how it looks. AJ looks good. AJ looks good. Excuse me. Um, judging from this, uh, it's gonna. Mm, yeah, I have high hopes. Like, come on, we've seen previous figures from them, and we know they can do good work. So what we got? Pinkie Pie, Twilight. Rarity Fluttershy? Did Fluttershy came out? I'm not really sure. Then Rainbow Dash. And yeah, Applejack is going to be the last one. So, we'll see how it goes. Uh, from what I can see here, it looks good. The details on the boots are good. Good. So is the shirt. Man. This looks, this looks good. Yeah. No complaint for me. But hundred dollars man like I can buy a lot of things with that but other than that uh, no for for the pictures on the figure or whatnot so I can't really say much about this so I'm gonna skip ahead on some pretty bad news I should have opened the show with this but you know what let's go to this one so recently uh, fro content creators on tu <laughs> for content creators on YouTube like myself and others uh, we have been emailed this thing called the Copa and what Copa is is the children's online privacy protection act and what this does is uh, well it regulates our content and make sure it's friendly for kids and whatnot. But the problem here is it's not clear in how things are implemented or what the rules is. And um, earlier this week, Matt Pat from Game Theory recently did a video on the topic. And yeah, I mean, it's vague from what I can tell. Uh, in my understanding of it is that when you create a video for YouTube they ask you is it made for kids or is it not made for kids and the thing is some channels um, let's just say if you are a channel about Metalworks, clearly that's not made for kids. That's clearly made for adults and whatnot. But if you have a channel for gaming, uh, let's just say Minecraft or Fortnite, those are the two popular games with the kids. But if you are a content producer who is, uh, well, foul mouth and whatnot, you don't really censor yourself, then it's not really made for kids. See, it's really difficult for for us on the MBS show we take the policy of all of our contents are PG-13 but if somebody slips up and says a bad word or curses on the show um, hence why <laughs> this live segment of the news thing is always done by me because well I know how to control myself and if I screw up I have to take it from the start Editing is hard when you don't know uh, when you don't have the right tools for it. But I digress. So whenever Silver or Sapphire says a bad word, or even Terra says a bad word, or even me, Sweetie Bot is there to well bleep us out and says the phrase that's not a word. So yeah, we control ourselves and technically. We're not made for, uh, we, our show is not meant for kids, but if kids do listen to it, we try our best to 
make our content as child friendly as possible but that's the thing sometimes uh, the rules here says like okay um we can't really advertise to kids we can't really promote stuff we can't really manipulate them into buying or spending money on something but for the show here with ponies like we what <laughs> what i personally do is we just talk about the news and stuff and if a mcdonald tires comes out i would say stuff like oh cool it's out if you have the chance go buy it and something like that i mean i'm not promoting it but it's the news it's there you you are a fan of ponies so technically if you do have the chance go buy it like i had the chance and i did sometimes i don't because i don't have the time or money or interest in spending money on mcdonald's or burger king or whatever it is so it's a fine line where we're not really advertising to kids but it's in the news so we report on it sometimes and even with some stuff with that's right <laughs> I, I, and i think i know why or it's kind of um how do i put this what's the word i'm looking for subconsciously not reporting on toys that much because well my policy on it personally is that not every country will have the same toys as uh, the united states or any other places so example is that if a toy is available in target or walmart not every country has a target or walmart and if a toy is exclusively for hot topic you can't really get it other than hot topic there there's other ways but i'm not there's, there's semantics but the thing is we try not to prom well us on the MBS show we try not to promote toys that much and if there's something interesting example like previous topic the, the kotobukiya figure i straight up said that it looks great and awesome i wish i could buy it but it's a hundred bucks i don't say go buy it i would i say that if you have the cash extra income go do so and that's me and how i view things and this thing with copa it's very blurry it's very blurry because like i mentioned before the mbs show is not aimed at kids but it is child friendly we try to make the content as family friendly as possible with the pg-13 rating that we put on ourselves that's why <laughs> we I, i'm not sure um could be <laughs> how do i put this um we're not as popular as the other brony youtube or sorry <laughs> other brony podcast or youtube or whatever it is so mm, but we do have our moments we do have our, our moments but in the end this rule and law is very very scary for us because here um the consequences are so are also ridiculous if someone release <laughs> if someone release an adult focused my little pony video on youtube and label it uh, labels it not child friendly it could still technically be targeted by the ftc because it involves child friendly topics the punishment up to 45000 fines per video so e even this here says like yeah my little pony focus video adults blah blah blah, blah child friendly <laughs> it's it's so confusing where we do <laughs> Uh, I, I can't really think right now <laughs> it's just it's, it's hard it's hard but the thing is 
there there are there are a lot of things going through here like there are a lot of adult fans of the show even what a uh, pokemon digimon the lion king i mean we all know <laughs> we all know how the fan base are and with this thing here it's very very hard to create content it's hard that um several pony youtubers including sim Christina have this they published their videos and talking about sim uh he recently made all his well moving on to the next topic then uh set his pony videos on private but then uh he unhid it for what you would call this for a moment because the thing is it's so hard because some people make their income via youtube and having this hit like i'm i'm not the right person to talk about this because i personally on the mbs show don't monetize their video with adsense i wish i do i wish i did but i don't why i don't feel right about it i, I don't know i mean it will be nice to have some adsense Just imagine me rolling in YouTube money by ten dollars by the end of the year. Yo ho ho! Yeah, but now I personally feel that the MBS show with AdSense is kind of not worth it because not money. A lot of you out there are watching. Thank you very much. But it's not enough to get that. at sense like m- to make it worth it but that's besides the point so what is our stance on the mbs show about copa mm. we try to do our best and try not to do bad things and say bad things we just report on the pony news and try to be friendly as possible that's have that's always been our motto from the very start so yeah i i can't say much about that one so let's get off this confusing train of thought and let's move into well my favorite thing cardboard <laughs> so anyway um last week we reported that uh sophisto <laughs> created uh, a few pony team magic the gathering decks First it was Twilight Sparkle, now previously and and then it was Nightmare Moon slash Princess Luna, and now is Rarity. So I just skimmed through this one, and I'm I'm getting a feeling where Sephir is just being mean. He's playing a really really. Uh, control well not really control but a, a, a deck where you cast out big creatures for a really good discount and as per usual he has a deck list the deck list is here and yeah it's very interesting the build is really interesting uh relying on a lot of eldrazi and huge as creatures with stuff like wow I'm looking at the list and yeah he's mean Th- this deck is mean really really mean other than that I I can't say much it's uh, it's a deck it's a deck all right so yeah if you guys are interested in trying to build this deck it's in the list and yeah I can say much and it's pretty evil. Like yeah, he he he's not pulling any punches. Th- this deck is mean, really really mean. So with that that's well, that's the show, this is news. So 
Oh boy. Uh, let's go to the next topic. And next topic is what have you been? Uh, what have I been doing for my week? And oh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yep, my week has been pretty s- nice, chill. I've seen a movie. Yay. Uh, movie I saw was Charlie's Angel. If you guys are scoffing at the, <laughs> scoffing at the show, and um, thinking that oh wow he watched a very bad movie, and it's not that bad. It was kind of fun. So how would I describe Charlie's Angel? It's pretty interesting. I like, I like it a lot. Um, it's not your regular spy movie. It's how, how do I even put this? It is a fun action movie, uh, starring uh, the lead, lead characters were girls, but I, I don't really mind it. And it, it was a lot of fun. I'm not really giving a good description here because I'm trying to remember stuff that won't kind of sound lame or spoilish, but. Overall, um, some of the actors there, I was quite surprised with. Um, one of the lead characters uh, in the show, she was a blonde with black tips, something like that, or black roots, I, I don't remember. And knowing what she played before, that surprised me, really, really surprised me. And yeah, th- this movie was a lot of fun, I, I can't. I don't know. <laughs> I, I would say that if you have the time and if you can go watch it for cheap, go go do so. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It is a interesting action popcorn flick that you can enjoy. So that's been my week. Um, other than that, just been a lot out eating and just chilling chilling out with friends. Oh, play magic the good <laughs> play magic the gathering this week. Uh, like well, last week Friday, um, got a new deck and won. It was pretty interesting and it was pretty fun. So yee me go woo. But other than that, um, hmm, got not much to say. Like I, I don't really have a busy week last week. Who knows? Maybe this week I'll do something. Maybe I don't remember. We'll see. So anyway, uh, let's move on to, well, the end. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the, <laughs> you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. You can... Sorry, uh, you also you can... <laughs> Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Please don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, we have the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Torterra, and I'm not sure if Safi is free because she has her college things. And over there, you'll catch us reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, specials, and other things. Such other things are comics, video games, and movies. Yes, we do other things too because I like to play Overwatch. So does Silver and I think Terra. And Seppi loves the Pokemon, so does Terra too. So yeah, maybe we'll do a discussion about that, whatever it is. We we do stuff, we do stuff. Also, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, my stuff lag, Tristan, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. So, yeah. <laughs> I have been Norman Sanzo, and, well, it is my 
honor and pleasure to entertain you all. I hope you enjoy the show. And with that, I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>